Hello guys and welcome back to the Beyond Standards channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1. On the left side of the map we have the blue gunsel player Agent Carnage and his opponent on the right side is the pink Isengard's player Gamrov. This is the most El Clasico matchup you can actually get in Battle for Middle Earth 1 and I think uh, it's also the most balanced matchup as long as the gunsel player is on host. Uh, with Onos, I mean, he needs to be the host of the game, so he has less delay since Gondor player will be microing around with his Gondor Knights, while Isengard's player is gonna stick up to the infantry units, and the micro with horses is always uh, harder than with like Swordsman, Urukai, but also Pikeman. And also quite interesting start from the Gondor player. He's starting with two farms, normally we would uh, see a furnace into the farm, and, I mean, the furnace in Gondor will be called Blacksmith. Uh, the reason for that is you want to get your Blacksmith to level 2 as soon as possible. This way you can actually purchase your upgrades way faster. But that's more like an economy start. He's dashing forward with two of his soldiers. And the Isengard player was actually going to the top side. So he will be a little bit too late with the second Urukai. Alvin Wood might be placed in here. Alvin Wood is going to increase the amount of armor from the Gondor soldiers by 40%. And on top of that, the leadership Isengard units are gaining from the War Chant is also gonna be negated. So it's a win-win situation definitely. And Isengard, but also Rohan are two factions in Battle for Middle Earth 1, which are not able to pick the Elven Wood or Tainted Land from the beginning of the game, unlike Gonzo, but also Mordor. That's why Elven Wood, but also Tainted Land, are very powerful against those two factions early on. Okay, so he's actually focusing down on uh, the lumber mill. But as you can see yourself, some of these soldiers are attacking the Urukai. And while he, in the meantime he's also using a lot of his lumber mill workers to repair the slumber mill, you can see the HP is barely going down. And after all, I gotta say that's a great defense from the Gonzo player. I mean from the Isengard's player, sorry. And he will not be only able to keep the Lamir Mill alive, but also his Urukai are quite healthy and he can actually send them forward and then actually destroy potentially the farms from the Gonzo player Carnage, but also go for the creeps. And because he was starting with a furnace inside his base alongside with the Uruk pit, Isengard's Eco now with double Lamir Mill and one furnace inside will always be enough to keep making more Urukai until the Uruk pit hits level 2, which is gonna be necessary obviously because you will need those Isengard pikemen later on. During all this time, um, where is the Hobbit from the Gonzo player? I can't tell you. Probably he is going to attack, potentially. I can't see him on the map for some reason. There are still there is still one soldier remaining. He's trying to kill some Lumber Mill workers, which is quite nice. And I think that's really important to mention as well. In most situations, you are not gonna be able to take down the enemy Lumber Mill. Because a good Isengard's player or Mordor player, they know how to defend. So if you can't take it down, it's most of the time better to either camp there and fight against the Urukai, deny him as much time as possible, kill as many Urukai as possible, or try to at least kill some Lumber Mill workers. Because Lumber Mills in Battle for Middle Earth 1 games, or 2 and Rise of the Witch King, are resource generating structures that are relying on the lumber mill workers. So the structure all alone, unlike a farm, furnace, blacksmith or whatsoever, is not gonna generate money from itself and it relies on these lumber mill workers and if you can kill them, he needs to replace them, that's gonna cost him time, but also resources, 20 for each laborer he's gonna get out of the lumber mill. So it looks great for the Isengard's play definitely. Look his base, he has now 4 furnaces inside the base, the Uruk pit was just hitting level 2, the pikemen are on the way, but the Gondor knights are already out. Uh, with this start, he has more farms inside the base, that's gonna give him more farm, you know, for more food bonus, sorry, which again will reduce the amount of cost for the Gondor knights, you know, by each 5 person. You can see 10, 15, 20, 25 to 30 percent up till to 6 farms. But he was losing one of these farms outside and the second farm will be also taken down. That's a smart move from the Gondor player because with the first Gondor Knight you want to always make sure to kill the Lumber Mills at the opponent side of the map because they are most likely gonna hit level 2 first and if your Gondor Knights are out fast enough um, you can actually 
keep killing those mills because these mills are gonna be protected for the majority of the game uh, afterwards so the only chance you can actually take them down is with the first Gundam Knight because it, you know when your second Gundam Knight is entering the battlefield you will have multiple pikemen and it's gonna be very very hard for you to actually take down those lumber mills the hobbit by the way is being annoying was able to kill some lumber mill workers which is again like i said before very very effective and Isengard player was also able to creep the work layer at the bottom left side he is creeping the work layer at the bottom right side at the same time but this is not gonna work he will need the support from these urukai because one Ur one urukai all alone Without the Warchant, uh, he is actually Warchant and I take it back. He might be able to take it down, but I think before he is going to be able to destroy that one, the work will respawn. Um, we have still a bunch of creeps left on the, on the map. And Isengard's player now has to make sure to deny as many creeps as possible. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking. Because the Gondo player's goal will be to collect enough power points to get the Elven ally summon from the spellbook. Which is the only way early on to kill the enemy pikemen, to go for a potential base rush, or to fight for the map control by killing the pikes with the summoned Elven warriors. The second Elven boot was by the way placed at the bottom left side. Isengard's player was actually able to creep the second work player at the bottom right side as well. We're gonna keep an eye on these Gondonites. One of them is at the bottom left side, it's a level 2 battalion, almost level 3. The second one was just fishing for some more lumber mills. But as you can see yourself, and that's what I meant before, Isengard's player now is already making sure that his pikemen are in position, so he has always a vision control around these creeps. This way he can easily contest them. Okay, um, Gonzo player is now being able to get some map control, that's gonna be his third farm. His third... No, actually not. He was going for the barracks, which is quite interesting to see. Because what are pikemen weak against? Exactly, they are weak against soldiers. The swordsmen, in this case the Gondor soldiers, they're gonna force the Isengard's player, if nothing else, to go for the work riders, to counter them. So it's a strategy game after all, and in those RTS games, there are units that are good against a specific unit type, and again, they are also being weak against some other units, if this makes sense for you guys. And that's why Isengard's player has to make sure to avoid fighting those a swordsman. On the bright side for the Isengard faction, however, Isengard's infantry units, swordsmen like Urukai, but also pikemen, are faster than the soldiers from the Gondor faction. So they can always disengage, and this way, Gondor player will never be able to reach out to them unless Isengard's player is not paying attention. You see a Berserker, by the way, who is one of the stronger units of Isengard faction. It's a great starting unit, by the way. You can, you know, use them to kill orcs, but also unupgraded Gondor soldiers quite easily. Soldiers, however, are quite cost-efficient. You know, they cost only 120 each. Obviously, the orcs from the Moro faction are the cheapest. They cost nothing. Then you have the peasants from Rohan. They cost 100 each. And the third cheapest unit, or the second most expensive swordsman in the game, in this case, are those Gondor soldiers. Okay. So the map is turning slowly but surely into the pink color from the Isengard faction. We have still some creeps left on the on the map as well. Uh, the creep at the top right side and the creep at the bottom or at the left side of the river is still remaining on the field. If we take a look into the current command points and power points, a uh, Gondor player has like four battalions up on the field. He is getting more soldiers now from the barracks. He has almost two power points collected. Isengard's player is going for the heavy armor. So if the pikemen are full upgraded, they will be able to win the 1v1 situation against the Gondor soldiers and that's gonna force the Gondor player to upgrade the Gondor soldiers to make them stronger. He is still one power point and even a little bit more than that away from getting the Elvin allies and the time is gonna be in favor of the Isengard's player because the more time Gondor needs to unlock that ability from the spellbook the more money during all this time Isengard's player will get and he will be able to upgrade all his pikemen outside of the map and this way he can even fight these elven warriors once they are summoned. And I think we're gonna see the first rush from the Gonzo player. He was just purchasing the shields and look at this, that's what I meant before. Not a, not a single blacksmith inside his base is level 2 yet because he was starting, remember, with two farms instead of a blacksmith and a farm. 
Okay, with the soldiers here around, the Gondor player should be normally able to secure the creep. He was also able to destroy this farm. He's trying to get more and more power points, obviously, that's the only goal. He was able to secure the last hit. And one part of the treasure, but one part is gonna go for the Isengard player. Isengard player has a great amount of resources. He has collected four power points already after the Vision of Palantir, I think, which was used to reveal the Hobbit. Because Vision of Palantir, but also Eye of Sauron from the Moro faction, are abilities that are able to reveal uh, stealth units. In this case, when a Hobbit is cloaked and is invisible, you can use the uh, you know you can use the Vision of Palantir to make the Hobbit, in this case Pippin, visible again in order to take him down. He's not going for the work pit, he's going actually for the upgrades, which is... Eh, I don't know about that, I would like to see work uh, riders in this situation, they are just so good against the Gondor soldiers. And Gondor player, by the way, is demolishing three of his farms, level 2, in order to make more blacksmiths. Why? Because of the steel bonus. Uh, upgrades for the Gondor faction are quite expensive, and if you have six blacksmiths and that's the plan, you will get a discount of 40%, which is quite nice. Okay, for the next Elven Wood, Isengard's player will have his Tainted Land ready and will be able to cover that. Uh, that's a bad micro, and without the Forge Blades, it's gonna be hard for the Gondor player to deal the damage he's looking for. Especially with a level 1 Gondorite Battalion in an Isengard base with full, almost full towers beside the two towers in the back. After purchasing all the upgrades from the armory, Isengard is now making the transition into the work pit. After realizing, okay, I will need works because Gondor player now starts to upgrade his Gondor soldiers, which means I won't be able to deal with them anymore with my pikemen or with berserkers. Again, berserkers are only good and effective against unupgraded units. Okay, um, I mean, in this situation, when you don't have, you know, when you don't use Vision of Palantir for a long time, and if you don't have a reason to use it, you can always use it for scouting. So you can use it on the Gondor base. Just to see what's going on, you know, if he's going for, you know, trebuchets, workshop, or if he's, if any hero is joining the battlefield, if he's making more soldiers or tower guards, scouting and getting more vision control is super underrated, and I'm a huge fan of getting more vision control. Okay, uh, Isengard's player is playing kind of slow, I'm surprised that Gondor player has so much map control, but the reason for that is because he was so late with the transition into the Work Riders. After the Work Riders, he should be much, much, you know, it should be much, much easier for the Isengard's player to maintain the map control he had before. Because pikemen are the greatest counters after Nazgul or flyers against the horses. Look at this. They're level 2. They will be able to win. The problem here for the Gondor player is the fact that he has not a single one Highly leveled Gondonite Battalion, because he was not able to creep. I take it back, he has actually one level 5. And that's the only battalion, by the way, which will be able to fight against the enemy pikemen, as long as the pikemen are not upgraded with uh, forge blades or heavy armor. Once they are upgraded, you can't fight them anymore. But in this situation, he doesn't even have the forge blades just yet. We have the Warcriders Riders joining the battlefields now. Isengard base is safe, and it's gonna even get worse for the Gonza player once those blacksmiths are gonna hit level 3. They are the tankiest buildings in the game, and with level 3, they will also be able to shoot down the enemy units. Okay, that's what I meant before. So the Warcriders Riders are coming, whole ability is gonna be used, that's gonna increase the damage of these works by 60%, which is gonna make them kill those Gonza soldiers way, way faster. Uh, and look at this, he was just able to get the power points he needed, but I, let me get, let me make it actually clear for you guys. For me, Elf Summon is much more effective if you are able to unlock it very early. Now, in this stage of the game, I would say it's gonna be still useful, it's not gonna be absolutely useless, don't get me wrong, but it's not gonna be by far as effective as if he would be unlocking that like 5 minutes ago. Because now Isengard's player is gonna be able to have enough sustain in his economy, but also enough sustain in his base to easily counter this Elven allies. By the way, Gonzo player also stopped making, you know, stopped using more Elven woods, but that's a nice attack. Taking down the Uruk pit 
is the best thing you can do in a base rush of Isengard. Why? This way, you can make sure that he won't be able to spam more pikemen within the next 2 minutes. Remember, in order to make pikemen for the Isengard player, he needs to get the Uruk Pit to level 2. He needs to make either 3 battalions of crossbowmen or like 5 battalions of Urukai. That's gonna obviously cost him a lot of time. That's gonna give enough time to the Gonzo player to fight for the map control. Nice micro, he will be able to save his Gonda Knights. And again, again, taking down the Uruk Pit is quite nice. He was also able to kill a bunch of uh, Vork Riders there. The level 5 battalion of Gonda Knights is still in the base. Isengard's player is making sure always to demolish those towers in time, because towers, statues, but also wells in battle for middle of one. If you don't demolish them, you're gonna give too much power points and too many experience for the enemy units. Might lose this Gondor Knight level 5 battalion, by the way. Ooh, that's gonna be close. Nice, safe. Nice, safe, not even close. He's gonna fish for it, but... And by the way, guys, if you have only one unit left from Battalion like he does, it's so much harder for you to micro them. So he might still lose him. He's not paying attention. He's paying attention, obviously. You want to make sure to save that. That's the strongest Gondor Knight he has left on the field. But look at the map control in the meantime. Gondor player has only one farm left. That's all he got. And his sustain in his economy is pretty bad. He's trying to save for the guns after white, by the way. But he's like one one power point and a quarter away from getting the power points. Gandalf without Gandalf the White is not worth 6,000 resources, let me tell you that much. And he's now gonna make the combination of uh, Tower Guards and Soldiers. By the way guys, this is the, you know, this is the patch 1.03 and this replay is like from 2007, 2007. So it's like over 13 years old. And these players, you know, obviously... Uh, Carnage, but also his opponent, Gamrov, are not active players of Battle for Middle Earth anymore. By the way, important to mention is the fact that uh, Isengard pikemen are way stronger in a 1v1 situation against the Tower Guards of Gonzo. Uh, as you can see, they won't be able to fight them. And also, pikemen from Isengard are way faster than the Tower Guards from the Gondor faction. Another base rush is gonna happen, but I don't like that situation for the Gonzo player. I think he needs to make sure to fight for the map control because, again, yeah, you can keep killing these furnaces, but I think um, with this much resources he's being able to get from the slammer mills outside of his base, Isengard has enough and more than enough sustain to keep rebuilding and to keep making more units. Because evil factions, they are relying much more on the resource income from the lumber mills outside of their base much more than on the furnaces or slaughterhouses with the motor faction they are generating inside their bases. The I like the fact now that he's fighting for the map control, using the fact that the Uruk Pit is still not level 2. Again, every pikeman he's able to kill now is gonna mean much more in this very situation for the Gonzo player, because there is not, there are not more pikemen coming out just yet. I mean, he's obviously gonna make more crossbow men in order to get the Uruk Pit level 2 as soon as possible. At some situation, he also needs to make sure to make combos. Um, and he didn't even purchase a fighter upgrade from the armory. So that means he will have to rebuild the armory at some point. Why? Because if the eagles are gonna be summoned later on, uh, if you don't have combos or archers to take them down fast enough, the eagles from the Gonzo faction spellbook are gonna devastate your entire army. But I think uh, Gonzo player is not that rich because he has to make like the combination of tower guards and soldiers all the time. Tower guards they cost 500 each, soldiers they cost 120 each, so all alone from the base cost they cost already 620 when you make a combination like this. And upgrading them is obviously gonna cost you a lot of resources as well. Okay, so we have a small fight in the middle of the map. Um, really important to mention is the fact that War Riders are no match to the Gondor Knights. Um, once they have the shields purchased, and once they have some levels, you can't fight them anymore without War Chant. That's not possible. And Isengard base, I mean, he has one, two pikemen around only. And I think that's gonna be hard for him to defend because the Elven Alliance Summon will be used once again. I think War Chant has to be used defensively. Uh, heavy armor is incoming. That's gonna make them more tanky, especially with the War Chant buff. 
Yes, also fuel the fires, by the way, guys, which is in doubling the resource income from those lumber mills by 100%. That's a double, obviously. And with the whole ability, but also the war chant combination, the war riders, that's what I meant before, are killing those elves within seconds. He needs to move with the spike man really fast. The furnaces here are level 3. They have, like mentioned before, 6,500 health. This tower was not getting demolished in time. And that's gonna give Gondor the power points he needed. Two power points are needed after the heal to get the Gandalf the white power points from the spellbook. Which is gonna make Gandalf the white. You know, from Gandalf the Great to Gandalf the White, the upgrade is immense. I mean, the, the power spike you are getting from this spellbook, from Gandalf the White spell from the spellbook, is insane. Like, you are able to get on the shadow facts. You are the fastest cavalry hero in the game. Your abilities are recharging 100% faster. That means twice as quickly. Your abilities are dealing 100% more damage. You get 300 health. So you get so many bonuses from the Gandalf the White. But again, with Gandalf the Grey, you are not even able to get on the horse, which makes him quite useless. And he still costs 6,000 resources, which is, in my opinion, the most expensive hero in the game. You can argue with me and say, no, 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 Shanks, you are not right here. Witch King is the most expensive hero in the game. I don't agree with that. Because Witch King, yeah, true. He costs 8,000 resources. Okay. But first of all, Mordor is doing a much better job in order to collect resources. And second thing is, unlike Gunsalf, Witch King doesn't require you to invest two of your power points to make him viable and to make him strong. Gunsalf costs 6,000 resources plus two power points to be actually effective in the game. But we have Lords on the field, who is the most cost-efficient hero in the game for sure. Uh, he needs to repu um, you know, replace those Lumber Mills really fast because the Field of Fires can only give you resource income if you have Lumber Mills up on the field. You can see the animation, they are now glowing red. Um, it's a big map, I mean it's not a big map, don't get me wrong, but it's not a small map either. So you need to make a choice, Lourdes is not as mobile as Gandalf. And if you see Lourdes in the middle of the map, you can always lead to the bottom side, lead to the top side. The only way for Isengard to play around that is when he sieges you. He needs to start sieging very fast because time is gonna be now in favor of the Gonzo player because sooner or later he will make the transition into the workshop. He will make, you know, tons of cutters, tons of trebuchets and trebuchets are the nightmare for every Isengard player because every unit he has, every unit including the heroes are very weak against trebuchets. Even war riders are weak against fire. So if the trebuchet from Gonzo is gonna shoot you one time, they're gonna knock you down. So if you don't die, you're lucky. But if you don't die, you are gonna get knocked down. That's a CC crowd control. You are not able to move anymore. And then many more shoots, shots from the trebuchets is, are gonna follow. And they will definitely make sure to kill you quite easily and quite fast. That's why Isengard players, they should start... Or they should try to finish off the Gondor faction really fast, because one thing is for sure, Gondor has the best summons in the late game. So when everything is unlocked from the spellbook, Gondor will have a huge advantage over any faction in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Because the Eagles are the best non-primal summon, so they are the best after a Balrog and Army of the Dead. Um, they can kill heroes in a single second. They can fight for the map control, they are dealing a crazy amount of damage to the enemy structures as well and cloud break is nice elvin allies is nice rohan allies is nice you can use that for rushing the enemy base because rohan allies the rohan horses they're gonna come with rohirrim shield so they're not gonna be very weak against towers and the rohan allies summon is also recharging quite fast you can use them over and over again you can use them for the map control fights you can use them for the base rush and with that you have the most summons and the best summons in the game I mean, I think Isengard's player is not in a position. He was also rebuilding the armory for the fighter upgrade, in which he can go for a siege quite yet. And I think that's a perfect situation for a Gonzo player. Why? Because he has time. He has enough time to build more trebuchets, to get a bigger army. Um, to get a defense, which is gonna be a nightmare to deal with for the Isengard's player. During all this time, he can split his army, go for a rush, 
Kill some towers, kill some pikemen, try to get experience on Gandalf to white, because during all this time you are also gonna be able to get more and more and more power points, which is gonna bring you one step closer to the, to the like mentioned before, the Eagle Summon, but also to Army of the Dead, which is a game winning ability from the spellbook. You can devastate the entire army because Army of the Dead does not care about the size of your army. They're gonna run you down and wipe out your entire army within a second and a half. Okay, I mean, also to mention is the fact that Gondor player has actually more map control than the Isengard player. He has now really highly ranked, highly ranked Gondor Knight, which is gonna be even worse because with Gandalf around and the 200% combat experience means that one Gondor Knight, after killing one sentry tower here, will get like two levels. He's gonna summon the Alvin allies. Gandalf is around, he has Wizard Plus available. Isengard player is making sure to demolish. Also this one got demolished just in time, because that's that's the reason why he was not able to get any experience. Look at this now. Full level and a half from killing one furnace just because Gandalf is nearby. The 200% combat experience is crazy. Lurz is trying to get into range, but he won't be able to pin down with the cripple ability the opponent's wizard Gandalf the White. And that's what I mean. You can always dance around the Rosie, Rose, right? You can always force Lurz but also Saruman to go back. That's gonna give you more time. The time is in your favor. Now you are gonna make more and more trebuchets. There is no reason of rushing. I would also like to make sure that you make like two, gun, two tower guards uh, just to be able to keep those trebuchets safe against the enemy war riders. Oh, Gandalf actually got crippled down. But I don't know if, the, if he can kill him. Yes, Wizard Blast. Well, it was a nice Wizard Blast from uh, Saruman, by the way. They are holding on their Elven Wood and Tainted Land, which makes sense. But the main army from Isengard is in the middle of the map. So with that being said, Gandalf is safe for now. Yes, he was, you know, kind of forced to use his heal ability, but... Obviously, Gandalf is worth every ability you are actually able to get him, you know, keep him alive. Uh, Lourdes is only level 1, so leadership is gonna be kinda not very, you know, impactful in this situation because Isengard now has the leadership from Saruman, yes, but it's Saruman's ability or leadership is kinda defensive. Doesn't give you any damage stats, so the damage is gonna be the same. You have more armor, but... It's much more about the damage, because with the damage you are able to kill the eagles just in time before they can take down your lords or Saruman. And with the damage leadership you are also able to kill enemy Gandalf very very quickly and very very fast. Oh, cripple ability. Gandalf has to be careful in this situation. Gonzo player is still like 3.5 power points away from getting the eagles, but let me tell you that much. This is nothing. Because with the trebuchets, you will be surprised how fast he's gonna get these power points he needs and how fast the power point menu is gonna rise to the sky. Now it's, move, it's the move from Gonzo. He doesn't have actually that many trebuchets on the field. I was expecting more of him. Maybe he doesn't want to limb because trebuchets, let's be honest, are not the best way to win the games. But, oh, Gonzo. Nice dodge here with the pikeman as well. Fireball coming in clutch from the white wizard of Isengard this time. The crippled duration should be long enough to kill this Gandalf. Heal is on cooldown, but Warchan is also on cooldown. So with that being said, but Ballistas. Okay, yes, Ballistas shooting him down as well. He's gonna use the lightning strike. But Ballistas are actually dealing incredible. That's kind of bad. I would like to see, you know, Isengard player getting the last hit with Lords. Or at least with his combos, because Ballistas are not able to level up. And he knew that he doesn't have heal anymore. I mean, I can understand the reason why he didn't want to do that. Because, you know, better safe than sorry. You want to make sure to kill Gandalf. Uh, who is killing him is not very important. Because the most important thing is to kill him first. But the trebuchets are kinda grouped. If you are grouped like this, remember every siege weapon in Battle for Middle Earth 1 or also other Battle for Middle Earth games are kind of dealing a splash damage. That means they are dealing a small amount of area of effect damage. So they are able to hit multiple units at once. And that's why you need to split them if you are fighting with your siege weapons against all enemy siege weapons. 
because then one Ballista can actually hit like 3 trebuchets at the very same time. Tower Guards are doing a great job, but Ballistas are able to knock them down as well. That's what I meant. Look, he was able to kill, like, or not kill, because you will need always two hits. But Saruman can also use his Fireball ability, no big deal. It's also dealing splash damage. Fireball is coming in clutch on the Gundam Knights, actually. He was not using it on the Trebuchets. Eight power points collected for the Isengard's player. Wormtongue is available. He's kind of, ooh, there was a nice Wizard Blast, actually, from Saruman. He's full health still. He's gonna use now the Warm Tongue and get the control of these trebuchets and one of the Tower Guards even. That's a nice, nice fight here for Isengard, definitely. Gandalf still needs a lot of time to get back on the field. And also really important to mention is the fact that no one, not the Gondor player, but also not the Isengard player, were ever capturing those outposts. I mean, I can understand for the Gondor cases, but Isengard player should really try to fight for the outposts. In the worst case, you are able to build three furnaces to get some more money, to draw the attention to the outpost, you know, away from your base. And then you can also start sieging from this outpost, because this is obviously way closer to the enemy Gondor base than this base. Because look at the travel time. The Ballistas, they literally have to walk from one side of the map to the other side of the map. And the siege weapons are the slowest units in the game, so they're gonna need a lot of time to travel from one side to the other side. That's why those outposts are always nice for Isengard when you want to siege the Gondor player. Okay, uh, Fireball is available once again. He's gonna use it. And that's... Actually, he was only able to kill one trebuchet so far. And he's getting more Ballistas, never making actually any of these explosive mines. Um, he's waiting for Gansov. But again, Gansalf is not going to be very impactful as long as Lurt is around. And he is still two power points away from getting the Eagle Summon unlocked. I think Gondor player had this in his pocket. I don't know, maybe he was playing a little bit too passive. Um, the, the first rushes, the first big rush was actually impactful. But then the follow-up was kind of lazy. I think there was a mistake to give Isengard that much resources to wait a lot of time in your base with your trebuchets. Uh, Gandalf is gonna use... Oh nice, he was able to kill Saruman, but he got pinned down for that. Eagles are gonna be ready now, um, but Warchan is ready as well. So he's gonna be used. He's gonna go for a beautiful Wizard Blast right there. Heal is on cooldown though. But look at this, the trebuchets are demolishing the Isengard army and I think maybe you can actually survive. Oh, but the Ballista, holy quacamole guys, the Ballista is hitting like an absolute truck on this Gandalf. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Okay, um, yeah, the Eagles are gonna be able to clean up. There is one level 5 uh, pikemen. Lourdes got killed, Saruman got killed, that's gonna give him a lot of time. Um, kinda gate rush here, but I think Gondor player should be just fine. He needs to make sure to save this level 6 Gondor Knight, but they are healing over time anyway, around this, um, around this well. But look at this, he has like one farm, two farms outside only. I mean, luckily this farm is level 3, but it's gonna be taken down next. This farm is gonna be also taken down by those pikemen, and Isengard's player, unlike Gonzo player, keeps fighting for the map control constantly. Like, for example, do, do something with the eagle now. If you see pikemen here unprotected, kill them. Because in this situation, every player, both the Gondor player but also Isengard's player, they need to make sure to get the power points done. And Isengard's player is way, way closer to the Balrog summon, and Balrog is literally able to win the game alone if the Gondor player has nothing but his main base. Why? Because, by the way, the Warcriders he was able to get inside with the base with uh, were able to take down the Siege Works. It means, yeah, he can still make the trebuchets, but they're gonna come, you know, out way slower. You can see yourself, the rank 2 is gonna make the production 25% faster, and the rank 3 even 50% faster. It's gonna be a rank 1 a building, so the production speed of these trebuchets is gonna be way slower. And... Um, during all this time, he could have made, obviously, more trebuchets. Gandalf got killed once again, I think. Gandalf could have done much better in this game. 
I think the first death of Gandalf was pretty unnecessary. He was not able to exchange the death of Gandalf with anything. And the second attempt... I mean, it's not, it's not affordable for Gandalf to lose Gandalf. Yeah, I mean, you can maybe argue with me and say, yeah, but he was able to kill Saruman. But Saruman is not as important as Gandalf. Especially in this current situation in which Isengard player was getting so much resources. Finally, Gondor player is, you know, fighting once again for the map control. But let me tell you that much. Because, no, because if Isengard player is gonna get like 3-4 Lambian Mills, he has an outpost now at, at the top right side as well. With the Field of Fires, he's gonna get pretty much unlimited amount of resources. Okay, Warchan has been used. I like this I like this move here by the way. With the soldiers, he's getting into the back line, and this way you can make sure to attack the crossbowman. You don't wanna trample, but you can still fight them, by the way, guys. In this situation, if you see your opponent has the spikeman crossbowman combination, if you can, you can try to run around and trample them from the backside. If you have Gondor Knights here and you trample them like this, you will avoid trampling the pikes, and you can actually one-shot the back line of the crossbowman easily. Very, very easily. And the combo without crossbowmen is gonna be useless because pikemen are just the, the protectors of this battalion. Saruman, by the way, is almost level 7. He's back in the, on the field. That's gonna refresh his abilities. So he has Fireball, Warm Tongue, everything is back up. Don't get me wrong, Saruman is very, very important. But for me, Gandalf is always gonna be the key to victory for the Gondor faction. So we are getting more trebuchets now. He's gonna use the Lightning Sword will be able to catch the works of God and take down the entire battalion. 18 power points collected for the Isengard's player. He's only 2 power points away from getting the Balrog summon unlocked. Gondor player on the other side is 3.5 power points away from Army of the Dead. Remember, Army of the Dead can kill, Gun uh, can kill Balrog. So if the Gondor player manages to get the power point at the same time with the Balrog summon from the Isengard's player, he can use the AOD to kill the enemy Balrog to protect the base. And I think he might have to do that. Uh, not the best wizard plus in the history, but he was actually you know, using buff abilities at the same time. You could see yourself, there was no cast time. So he used Easter Light and wizard plus at the same time. That's why the animation was kind of cut down. Which is one of the easier ways to make a great combo with these uh, heroes. You can also do that with Saruman, with uh, Wizard Plus and Fireball at the same time. I'm a huge fan of the Fireball of, uh, of Saruman. The only downside from this ability is that it has a limited range and it can miss. Most of the time you see it being you know, missed on the Gondor Knights for example. If, they, if you use it, you have the cast time. And Saruman is not the youngest guy in the universe, so he will need some more, some more time to cast it. And during all this time, Gondor Knights are disengaging, and the more distance they're gonna get, the more like the most likely we're gonna miss the fireball ability. It not it can't be missed on infantry units, pretty much. One shotting also the, the trebuchets quite easily. We gotta keep an eye on Gandalf because I think he needs to do something in this situation. I mean, the base is kind of unprotected, he has like zero pikemen, but the problem is the fact that he has almost every single furnace beside this one, level 3. Again, they have 6500 health, and they are also able to shoot constantly, which will, me you know, which will mean that you will need multiple Gondonites to deal the damage you are looking for. Uh, 3 power points away for the next fight, eagles are gonna be ready, and eagles are also a great counter unit to Balrog. So with the combination of eagles, with Army of the Dead, and if you ignore the Eagles as Balrog, they wanna, they're gonna eventually take you down. And also Trebuchets are able to damage Balrog big time. So there are a lot of tools for the Gonzo player to deal with the enemy Balrog, but there is not... There is only one tool for the Isengard player to deal with the Army of the Dead, and that's Balrog. Not a single unit is able to destroy the Army of the Dead. I mean, Saruman can potentially hurt them, but... There are multiple battalions, and you won't be able to take them down. Gandalf can do that, obviously, with the Word of Power. Okay, so we have soldiers, which is kind of random. I don't know about the soldiers in this situation. He's going to use the Fireball once again, I think. Saruman was definitely the MVP of this game for the Isengard player. I like the fact that Gondor player is now fighting for the map control 24-7, pretty much. Um, and... I think this game can still go either way. 
The Gondor player was also able to capture this outpost at the bottom left side. What I would love to see in this situation is that the Gondor player starts making some rangers and put them inside the outpost. This way you have some protection. Remember, Warc Riders are weak against fire. So if you have a statue around this area, and you have rangers inside, the Warc Riders, they won't be able to kill your outpost, trust me. And also combos in general are great against the pikeman crossbowman combination. And remember, Isengard's player has no rain, and he won't have rain any soon as well, so he's like far away from getting rain. Obviously, he's not gonna go for rain now, because that's gonna delay his Balrog. So with the leadership from the statue and guns off, you can make your combos quite strong, and Lourdes is still far away from leadership as well. So Isengard has like one reliable leadership, and that's from the Warchan, which is a leadership that's gonna run off eventually. So it's not a permanent leadership that then you are gaining from like a hero or a, a structure. Warchan is like a buff, which is active for like 30 seconds, and it's gonna run out after 30 to 40 seconds, and you can actually re-engage and play around the, um, play around the cooldown of your opponent's Warchants. Gondor player is capturing the second outpost at the top right side. So he has a great amount of resource income in this situation. He obviously, he obviously also makes more units. But he has not a stable on the field anymore and I don't like that. Because he has like two Gondor Knights if I'm not mistaken. I see yeah, I see one here with guns off. And one here, a level 10 battalion. Around the top right side. And you will definitely need some more um, Gondor Knights. Because imagine him having like 5 Gondor Knights, he could be going for the base 24-7. In this situation, Isengard player doesn't need to rush anything. Because he's so close for Balrog. You know, what he can do is sacrifice some units. Because as we know, Isengard is a faction. You are also able to generate power points from losing units. So, Isengard, if you wanna just make fast power points, just, you know, suicide with one of your heroes and you are good to go. Okay, Vision of Palancia. Oh, that's gonna be disaster, boys. Oh, that's gonna be hallelujah moment for Isengard, but feels bad moment for the Gonzo player. I think he needs to summon the Eagles now, start hurting Balrog, and then maybe engage with your guns afterwards. Maybe that's the way to go. I can tell you what to do. But I think this Isengard player knows how to destroy the base with Balrog all alone. There was a beautiful breath fire and he was also able to kill the eagles at the same time. That's unbelievable. That's perfect timing, but also luck. He killed the eagles. He killed five structures with his breath fire all alone. That's like the best what you can do with a Balrog. Because what happens is pretty much when the eagles are attacking, they are going down. Breath fire is dealing damage in front of Balrog or wherever he uses it. And if you are being in the attacking position while he is using breath fire, he's gonna most likely kill your eagles, one shot them as well. Indeed, the only guy that can actually withstand his breath fire, which is imp amplified with the ignite, is Aragorn with his blade master and Anduril sword. He can survive that barely, but still, for some reason, he was not even able to kill the bees. Gandalf going for a Visa Blast, but I don't know about that, I don't know why you should do that, and that's again the situation, you should never trade your guns off, ever, one for one or not even one for two, the only way or the only reason, look at this, now he has to waste his army of the dead for pretty much nothing but saving his guns off, why? Because he was going to die if he didn't do that. Isengard player was now capturing the outpost at the top right side. By the way, pretty long game, guys. Oh, wait a second, my bad. What happened here? Uh, kind of throw me back to desktop. Pretty long game, by the way, guys. Um, we have Saruman, level 7.5. Unlike Gunsalf, he has not a level 10 ability. Gunsalf on the other side is level 8.5. His Ward of Power is game-changing and can win the games for you quite easily. And... Yeah, Gondor player keeps fighting for the map control, but AOD summon, the army of the dead summon was kind of kind of wasted. He could have done much, much better with the summon. Uh, obviously, he had to do that because of his guns off. Heal was, I think, available anyway, but better safe than sorry. 
He lost Gandalf a couple of times already. And the more levels he has, the more expensive he's gonna be to revive. And the more time he will need to get back on the field. I think we're gonna see at least one more Balrog summon and one more Army of the Dead summon. Because in this current situation, Isengard player won't be able to win the game without summoning the Balrog. And the problem is, he keeps losing the map control constantly. Like, Gonzo player is doing a great job. And that's what I meant before in the early game. Gonzo has the best summons in the game. So Gonzo will be able to use the Cloud Break later on, to get Rohirrim later on. So he has so many tools to go for your base rush, to fight for the map control, to kill your units left and right. And especially the fact that he has like level 10 Gondor Knights. It's gonna mean they're gonna be uncontested for the map control fights. And you can't simply make more pikemen and send them out. I mean you can, but I think he has not the resource income anymore to actually keep making more units and upgrade them all the time. Because he has like one number mill left. And Lumber Mills, they have a downside. In the late game, they are not very impactful anymore. Why? Because look at this, there are no trees around anymore. The Lumber Mill worker has to go to Afghanistan in order to, uh, in order to cut some trees. And they have much more travel time. And obviously there are some Lumber Mills which are gonna have trees around. But this one and this one will have like a lot of... <laughs> A lot of travel time with the Lumber Mill workers. I mean, you can still switch, by the way, with evil factions. You don't have to build Lumber Mills in the late game when there are no trees around anymore. Obviously, you can demolish them and make some slaughterhouses instead. But again, you won't have the resource income from the slaughterhouses uh, as much as from the Lumber Mills, especially for the Isengard faction with the Field of Fires, which is like a wasted ability if you don't have any Lumber Mills up on the field. Okay, so we have... Combos, but you can see he's struggling resource-wise in resource -wise already. Not even being able to upgrade them with fire, uh, fire upgrades and heavy armor. He's luckily being able to get a lot of resources. He has enough power points for the industry. He should be definitely going for it. Definitely use it on this level 3 furnaces. Increase the resource income by 100%, but he's gonna go for the devastation instead. Which will be used immediately. The difference between devastation and uh, the, between devastation and all the other abilities, which are you know, buffing your resource income, is the fact that devastation is insta resources. Like you use it, you get money immediately, right? And industry, but also field the fires that gonna buff you in long terms, so it's gonna be more effective in long terms. You also don't need to kill trees again. Devastation, like field the fires, will have. Um, you have to use it on trees. Otherwise, you don't get any value. But from uh, industry, you can imp up your, you know, furnaces level 3 with 100% more resource income. It's gonna give you nice history light. Lourdes is not in position, so Saruman has to be very careful. Balrog summon is gonna be ready. At the same time, it's with the eagles, I'm assuming. Uh, by the way, eagles have also a really long uh, cooldown. The same cooldown like Army of the Dead, but also Balrog. Obviously, they are also very, very strong, so it makes sense. I think what Isengard's player now has to make, has to, has to do, is fight for the map control, make sure to destroy both the outposts, and then use the Balrog afterwards. And once you are done killing the base, you can actually defeat the Gonzo player. It's very important, because if you kill the base, but he has outposts outside of the base, he won't get defeated. Well, nah, this time he was not able to kill the eagles. Look at this. But nice breath fire regardless. Gandalf can kill him, by the way, guys. I mean, he can also kill Gandalf with the, with the fire whip. I think he's trying to wait until he's gonna use the fire whip on one of the eagles. But obviously, he's not gonna do that. He can always let the eagles kill him with the help of the trebuchets. But I think he will be able to kill the base before that. He needs to reuse the ignite. Which is giving him... 200% increased damage. Also, eagles are taking damage from attacking him. As you can see, they lose some health. Uh, with Fire Whip, he will be able to one-shot them. Look his health. So with Easter Light, he can actually kill him. Easily. But I think uh, he's gonna kill him. Oh, that's gonna... Oh, nice one. Oh, that's actually massive. Because the Fire Whip had longer animation. Not only he was able to save the bees, but... He was also able to get Gandalf level 10, ladies and gentlemen. That's very impressive. 
Because now he has two abilities that are able to destroy the enemy army. And he has seven power points collected. He can go for the Cloud Break. Cloud Break, guys, is not only able to slow down the enemy units, no? But it's also able to reduce their armor, which makes it much, much easier for you to kill the enemy army. He's gonna use that on the pikes. Got crippled just before. Obviously, it's not very effective on the heroes. He's gonna kill Gun Saruman just in time before the Wormtongue goes off. Gandalf, the one-man army, is using lightning swords to kill lords. And I think it's about patience now. The game is looking very, very hard in the favor of Gondor player, let's be honest. Like, by the way, uh, Gondor player is also on host in this game. I mean, on the bright side, Gondor's economy is looking very bad. So he will need a lot of time to rebuild the base, unlike Isengard. Isengard's base is untouched for a long time. Okay, he has the Rohan allies now, and he has the Cloud Break. So that means he has every single ability unlocked from the Spellbook. Isengard play on the other side. I don't know why he's not going for the industry just yet. He has some resources, he's gonna go for the Freezing Rain, but he has enough, pow enough money, or, or power points rather, to actually go for the industry as well. Finally, he's gonna use it. He only hit two furnaces, unfortunately. The third one, I mean, you can always hit three furnaces easily. In a, in a base like this. And if you have a camp, for example, the camp in the middle of the map on an Orion, you can use that on every single furnace and like buff every single one of them. Because the base is more like round, it has the same radius, like a, like a, like the usage of the industry ability. So he has industry, he has uh, devastation, he has field of fires, he has lumber mills, he has furnaces level 3. I think Isengard's player has some great resource income. And Gondor player has to now stall... I mean, I don't know what can happen, because let's be honest, Gondor player right now has the AOD, and every second he's wasting without him, without him using that, he's gonna favor the Isengard player. Because what he can do now, when you don't have anything to do, just get it on cooldown, use it on the base from Isengard, kill the Zita, you can do that easily, and kill the Siegeworks level 3, or Urukpit for example. I think Urukpit is the better target than the Siege Works. And then this way you can delay his heroes and delay him some more units. From a level 3 Urukpit, the units are coming 50% faster. But killing the Urukpit, killing the Zita, especially now that he has no uh, outpost control, is gonna be very, very effective. And you don't use it anyway, just use it. You know what I'm saying? Like he can use it here, for example, but I think it's not gonna be necessary. Um. Because the problem here for the Gondor player is the fact that he has not enough units to actually finish off the Isengard player right now. He has not even a stable anymore. So, yes, double outpost has some level 3 farms outside, but I like the fact that Isengard player, I would be calling it GG long time ago. <laughs> I would say, okay, you got me, you win, GG. But he is patient. He is fighting for the map control 24 7. He is not giving it up even against a level 10 Gandalf, you know, fighting like a warrior until the very end. I can't tell you who's gonna win this one, I just downloaded the replay without checking, because when I check and I know who's gonna win, it's kinda boring, <laughs> for me at least, I don't enjoy them, and uh, I'm pretty sure you guys are also enjoying games which are not very one-sided. Because I think no one likes to see a game which is over in 5 minutes. Okay, he's gonna be able, potentially, with Gandalf to save the outpost. But Isengard's play is being annoying in this in this situation for the Gandalf player, obviously. Look at this, he's attacking both the outposts at the same time. I mean, he has only one Gandalf. Building more Lamer Mills, moving out with, with his army. Fighting until the very end. And look at this, before he's gonna use his army of the dead, the Balrog Simon will be ready once again. And this is like a never-ending story now, because, you know, he either has to use the AOD with Eagles to kill the Balrog before he's losing almost his entire base, or um, he needs to do something against the opponent base. Because if he keeps doing what he's doing, he is not only wasting his Eagles for a defensive move, but he is almost losing. He just lost every structure beside the Citadel before, so that's gonna force him to invest so much time and money to actually, you know, replace the structures he lost, if this makes sense for you guys. 
And during all this time, he's also not getting enough resources because he has like zero farms inside the base. And since he's losing all the farms outside of his base, the situation is not becoming any better for the Gonzo player Carnage. And Gamrov is shining bright like a diamond. Why? Because he's being patient, he's being focused, and he is willing to go really far for the victory of this game. Okay. Uh, Rohan Allies is ready, Cloudbreak is ready, Eagles are ready, AOD is ready for a long time. Eel and Elvin Wood are ready as well. The only ability on cooldown is the Elvin Allies. You can see the resources are around 2000 resources right now. But he has barely units around. He has two battalions of uh, so, um, horses and one Gunself. That's all he got by the way. And he needs to make sure to make some more units. He's finally going for the Steeple. That's really needed and necessary. On the other side, Isengard's economy and also the I mean, the command points he has under his control is looking much, much better. Uh, Saruman is back on the, on the, back on the field. Uh, Lourdes is also there, has to be somewhere around. I think with the army here, I can't see him. There he is, level three and a half. I mean, Lourdes was kind of unlucky this game because he's sitting on this low levels now for a long time. Saruman on the other side, Saruman is. Mm, pretty impactful, I think the MVP for the Isengard player definitely level eight and a half, just giving 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 him at least sorry more HP, which means Gandalf won't be able to one shot him, almost one shot him with the Easter Light, so he can survive that burst. Uh, Easter Light, one of the strongest single target ability in the game. Um, I think uh, situationally the Arrow Wind from Legolas can actually deal more damage, well single target at least. I mean, obviously, you need to hit like a single target with the arrow wind, which is ha which is harder to do. It's a skill shot after all, and Easter Light is not a skill shot. It's a single target on hit ability. You can hit every unit very very hard with this ability. Like there is no exception. You can burst down. You can one shot Aragorn, by the way, when he has no Anduril and Blade Master with your Easter Light. I mean, I don't know what they are waiting for. I think. They are kind of trying to force their the opening summon, kind of baiting that. Maybe he wanna make sure that he's using the eagles first before he wanna use the Balrog again. But I think Isengard's player should just keep doing what he's doing. Maybe maybe that's good because he's going for the siege. Maybe he's gonna wait until Gondor player is forced to use the army of the dead defensively, and then after the army of the dead dis disappears. Look at this, I like the way that Isengard's player is fighting 24-7 for the map control. That's so important! Guys, I keep saying, I keep repeating myself all the time, but map control in RTS games is everything. And this Isengard player knows what he's doing. Look at this, permanent pressure. He denies Gondo player so much. He denies him the ability to expand, to fight back for the map control because he's busy he has not many units around, and he's busy defending the only two farms he has left. And once this level 3 farms are down, his resource income is gonna be very very bad as well. The Isengard player now has a Furnace, Gondor player is now finally getting some more Gondonites. He has all the abilities ready beside the Elven allies, and there comes Balrog. Beautiful. The trebuchets are moving out. By the way, you are not getting one-shotted for some reason. He's gonna uh, use Balrog more like a more like a defensively. I think you don't have to do that. You can also ignite just before you land. By the way, you can, as you can see, you can ignite mid-air. This way, you don't have to waste time for the animation because time micro is very important when you are, you know, microing with those very very game-changing and important units like Balrog. He killed the stable, he killed the citadel once again. I don't know what the AOD is doing here, I, I can't tell you. We, have the new bomb. we need to keep an eye on Gandalf to fight in this situation. He has ward of power, by the way, guys. But he's gonna go for a visa blast first. I mean, look, that's what I mean. Like, for one ability, he lost all the trebuchets, he lost his army of the dead, and he lost even his eagles for that. That's... Very, I mean, that's the definition of overcommitment and of wrong decision making. Let's be honest, guys. I think Isengard, I mean, Balrog had um, Gondor, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long time, by the way. 
has this in his pocket had this in his pocket. He had like a super big advantage, right? He had the full map control. He had like killed Balrog, that was Balrog on cooldown. Gandalf was level 10. He had like great amount of resource income, but the follow-up was very lazy. He was never a once again he was using industry only on two furnaces. Um, but that's the only thing, only bad thing I, I can say about this Isengard's player. The way he's performing and the patience level from Isengard's player is next level. Um, he keeps fighting for the map control, that's something Gonzo player has to do all the time as well. You don't need to be careful with your abilities like Cloudbreak, just use them. Get them on cooldown. Lose units, doesn't matter. If you lose the Rohirrim Alliance like he does, what does it change? Isengard's player has now already every single power point from the spellbook unlocked. So losing eagles from the summon, or Rohan allies, or Elvin allies from the summon, is kind of that's a risky move from Gandalf. I can't tell you what he's doing there. Oh, he can, he can actually, oh, but he's gonna die potentially here, right? He has heal, but nice dodge. Look at this. He was moving in all the different directions. Heal will be used very very early. The ballistas. I think that's game there. If Gandalf dies, the game is over. Yeah, he's gonna definitely die. Oh, that's a very risky move. Uh, and he doesn't even have the money, as you can see, to revive him. Look, the base from Gonzo. Yes, the Citadel, the base is almost full empty. He has like two structures left. Rebuilding the Citadel all alone costs you a thousand. Uh, Gandalf will cost three thousand resources, and let me tell you that much. I mean, he's far away from getting anywhere close to three thousand resources. He's not even being able to repair that Citadel here in the middle of the map. I mean, in the middle of his base. There's still some Gondonites around, but Gondonites, Elvin Elias is on cooldown, Rohan Elias is on cooldown, Cloud, everything is on cooldown beside Elvin Wood. Elvin Wood can be easily countered by the Tainted Land. And that's a, that's a nice trample, by the way. I think Isengard player was not paying attention. And if you are not being in the Porcupine formation with the Isengard Pikeman, and you don't have heavy armor and you are getting trampled down, there is a chance that you get one-shotted. That's why it's so important to be in the right battle stands with the pikeman which is called the porcupine formation okay um yes saruman yes lords i think lords died maybe let me check no lords died but it's not a big deal lords cost 800 while gandalf cost 3000 gondor player is very very behind saruman is fighting for the map control a lot of these gondor knights are doing literally nothing you should kill the furnaces first before you take down the citadel Always. This output is going to be taken down next. And now Isengard's player has the time he needs to take down every single farm outside of the base. And he can even go for the siege. Because he has like zero trebuchets left. And he has not enough units. I mean he does, but he can't risk the biscuit to commit to that fight. He needs to kill the ballista though, that's very important. Otherwise, look at the wall, it's already, you know, around 50% HP mark. So the Ballista is gonna actually go for the door. Okay. Um, he needs more than 1,000 resources still. I think he's gonna buy this outpost here potentially at the top right side. But look at this, Lords is here, more pikemen are coming. The main army from Isengard is in the middle of the map. Gondor Knights are finally fighting for the map control, but it might be just too late for that. Every single structure, including the Siege Works and the Uruk Pit, are level 3. Siege Works has also 6000 health, but a, but a Furnace has 6500 health. The door is gonna be killed. Killed the. What's. I don't know what he's attacking. That's like the top side of the door, as you can see. That's the door you need to kill. He has now multiple ballistas. AOD is on cooldown, still for the next one minute can use the Rohan allies in order to take down the Ballistas potentially, but the door is broken. That means, even if he uses now the AOD to defend Balrog, the door will be open. It costs 1000 to repair, and even if Balrog dies, he will be able to kill the Citadel first. But I think the plan from Isengard is different. You wanna force his opponent to use the AOD without him using the Balrog. And if he doesn't, Use it now, he has to use it now. Because if the Citadel is down, 
it's gonna be like very very easy for Balrog to finish off your bees. And just wait now. He has Palantir, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he has Palantir. I think all he needs to do now is wait until the army of the dead disappears. He's gonna use the Rohan allies, but they're horses against pikemen. How can you deal with that? He's gonna die. The one battalion in here is gonna kill everything. Trust me on that one. Like, he needs to fight, though. Because if, you, if they catch you, there is no reason of running away. He will lose everything, I think, here to the one pikemen, potentially. Or maybe not. Actually, he was able to kill them quite nicely. A map is getting more into blue. Lutz is using the Carnage, the Swordsman, the almost level 4 Gondor soldiers are pretty tanky, but not tanky enough. Lutz is almost level 5, which is gonna be a huge power spike. Isengard pikemen, or you know, the units in general, are gonna hit like an absolute truck. Lutz is gonna be taken down. Obviously, uh, Gandalf, not even the money yet. Saruman got, speed, uh, got taken down as well from the... He's gonna use the eagles, but can the eagles defend though? That's what I want to know. The breath fire, the first breath fire is gonna be very important. He needs to make sure to kill five structures first. Because there is no guns off, you can also use the whip, fire whip by the way, on one of the eagles. Just to reduce the amount of damage they're gonna deal. One eagle is not gonna be able to take Balrog down. You can also let one eagle hit you all the time, doesn't matter because... Time remaining is gonna go down faster than the amount of time the eagle is gonna need to take your Balrog down. But for now he's just ignoring them, he needs to reuse the Ignite. Again that's gonna give him also more armor, which makes him more tanky against those eagles. And I think that's gonna be it. He's gonna be able to destroy. And the outposts are both under control from Isengard. All he needs to do is use breath fire here. And that's gonna be the game. And... GG, and I can't believe it, but Isengard's player did it. Very well played and well deserved the victory. Definitely uh, a great game from 2007, by the way, on the patch 1.03. The map is obviously Forts of Isen. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please make sure to leave a like on this video. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe for more content like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I see you next time. Until then, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.